Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be talking about floats. Now, floats are a way that you can take things out of the document flow and maybe shove them to the left or to the right. And we're going to be talking about some of the common pitfalls and why you might be using this. So in this example, we're going to be pushing our heading to the left and our navigation to the right. And our header is going to start to look more like what you're familiar with with navigations and a header system. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so in the last video, we got our navigation started. We have some links here. There's no rollover state, and they're featured directly underneath our page title. So there's a lot that can be improved here. So let's come to our header, and let's check this out. If we open this up in here, uh, we see we have our H1. It's taking up all of this space, and we have our navigation that's taking up all uh, 100% of the width as well. We learned before that you could make things display inline. So if we were to say display inline, um, you could see that the header no longer takes up the full width and we could maybe make the nav display inline as well. And you can see that things aren't really working like that. So we can't just go around throwing display inline on everything uh, because it's not going to work. Now, what can we do, especially if we want to make this text, the uh, navigation appear on the right side? Well, this is where floats come in to the picture. Now, floats are a CSS property that makes layouts with CSS a little less painful by allowing you to float things out of the flow of the document. For instance, if we were to float this H1 to the left, you let's go ahead and say float left, you can see that now this nav completely, even though it says it's full width, it, it, if you hover over it, it still says it's full width, but it's not uh, being affected by this H1 because this H1 is now pulled out of the flow of the document. Now the nav sort of comes up along the side of it because it's being reflowed into the document. It does see that there's something there. It's not totally making it invisible or anything. So it hits this and it, it, the text itself sort of stops here. Although the nav element itself shows it being as full width. Well, that's where we even want the nav itself. We want the nav to be on the right side of the page. We don't want it to be butt up against the page title. So let's think maybe we can make this float right. Okay. Now we have our text on the right side. We have our header on the left side. But there's some issues with our header here. It's totally collapsed. We had our padding, which is still there, 10 on 10. So the header is only 20 pixels tall now. But because both of the children of our header are out of the flow of the document, the header now has no content to give it any sort of structure. The header doesn't recognize the H1 or the nav as taking up any space, so therefore it's just sort of collapsing on itself. Well, this is where a technique called the clear fix comes in. Now, there's been all sorts of ways of doing the clear fix over the course of web development history. Uh, at one time, people would even throw a sort of empty div into this header just to just to have a clear fix. Now, it's mostly being used by CSS preprocessors, which is something we may get into towards the end of this series. However, uh, there is a nice and easy solution to this that we can go ahead and just grab from another website. Now, there's something called the ClearFix class. So if we come to a new tab in Google, ClearFix class, you can pretty much come to any of these. CSS Tricks is a great site. So, I mean, the first one is obviously uh, not a bad link to go to. And you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff here showing you how to use ClearFix. It's a nice read if you haven't read it already. However, what we want to do is actually just grab this first little bit here, uh, this first CSS clear fix. And we can come up to the top of our document, since it's not something that we're going to be modifying, and we can just paste this in here. Now you can go through this if you'd like. It's basically, uh, a lot of it might be a little interesting, especially because we haven't gone over the pseudo elements after yet. However, all you need to know is that adding this class of clear fix to a container will make it so that that class knows to essentially fix that collapse of the flow of the document. So like I said, we're not going to get into the technicals right now, but all you need to know is that 
This ClearFix CSS class, applying it to the container will fix issues you have when floating its children elements. So let's actually add that float left to our site header in the real code instead of just in the inspect, which is temporary, as you remember. And in the main nav, we had a float colon right. Okay, so one's floating to the left, the other one's floating to the right. Now, we just need to add this ClearFix class to our header. Now, if you remember, you're allowed to use more than one class when we talked about classes. So we could just add a space and write ClearFix here. So now it's site header and ClearFix. So why the using this ClearFix class, it's going to know not to collapse. The left is flo the H1 is float to the left, the nav is floated to the right. Let's come to our page and give it a refresh. There we go. So we now have our links to the right. We now have our headline to the left and we have no collapse going on. Thank you to this ClearFix class. So this is a basic introduction to floats. Now we're gonna go over floating things more once we get into parts of our layout where we're having maybe a side column or a main column or things like that. However, for now, we do know that floating takes things out of the flow of the document, and we need a clear fix on the parent if we want to prevent a collapse from happening. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.